Hello students, in the previous class we studied about stellar secondary growth in dicot stem. Now in this class I am going to start with the extra stellar secondary growth in dicot stem. Okay, so let's say this is the transfer section of dicot stem. This is the transfer section of dicot stem. So in this dicot stem, this is vascular cambium which is formed during secondary growth so this is vascular cambium right i am writing vascular cambium as bc so when this vascular cambium undergoes cell division it cuts off it forms cells towards outer side and even towards inner side we already studied that vascular cambium produces cells towards more and more towards inner side which uh, gets redifferentiated into secondary xylem. So as more and more amount of secondary xylem is produced towards inner side, what happens? A pressure is built up. Some pressure is built up towards the peripheral tissues and hence peripheral tissues undergo breakdown. So what are the peripheral tissues that undergo breakdown like cortex, epidermis, these uh, tissues undergo breakdown. So when they undergo breakdown, what happens? Loss of water occurs and even the peripheral part of the stem may be prone to the effect of microbes and even other insects may uh, infect the peripheral part of the plant and hence to protect the peripheral part of the plant or to replace these peripheral tissues another cambium called cock cambium is developed cock cambium is developed and where it is developed it is developed outside the steel vascular cambium is developed inside the steel and hence it is called as stellar secondary growth the secondary growth which is taking place by the activity of vascular cambium is called stellar secondary growth whereas the secondary growth which is taking place by the activity of cock cambium is called as extra stellar secondary growth so this is cock cambium right so another cambium called cock cambium develops outside the steel that is extra steel so it is called now this uh, extra stellar cambium is called as cock cambium right and the secondary growth uh, which occurs due to the activity of this cock cambium is called as extra stellar secondary growth right okay so how this cock cambium is developed this cock cambium develops by the de-differentiation of the cortical cells present in general cortex so cock cambium is developed developed by de-differentiation developed by the de-differentiation of what is de-differentiation regaining the capacity of cell division that is de-differentiation so general cortical cells that means cortical cells present in general cortex undergo de-differentiation that is they regain the capacity of cell division and get de-differentiated into secondary meristem what is that secondary meristem cock cambium where it is formed outside the steel hence it is also called as extra stellar cambium which is nothing but cock cambium right okay so it is developed by de-differentiation of cortical cells Cortical cells are nothing but cells present in general cortex. Present in, I am writing as GC, general cortex. Right? Okay. So now this cock cambium forms, this cock cambium is forming cells towards outer side and even towards inner side. It cuts off. So this is cock cambium which cuts off cells towards outer side and even towards inner side. So the cells which are cut off, which cut off towards outer side develop into cork cells, cork cells. And the cells which are cut off towards inner side, inner side develop into secondary cortex. They develop into secondary cortex, right? secondary cortex now let's write the differentiation between let's study the differentiation between cock cells and secondary cortex okay cock cells and secondary cortex Right. So, cock cells are dead cells. They become dead at maturity. 
whereas secondary cortical cells the cells present in secondary cortex are living cells living cells and the cells of this cock that is cock cells are brick shaped these are brick shaped whereas the cells of secondary cortex are oval or spherical in shape so i am writing o oval spherical s right okay now the cells of cock are with suberin depositions cock cells are with suberin depositions and these suberin depositions are absent in the cells of secondary cortex next coming to tannins so there is accumulation of tannins in cock cells but there is no accumulation of tannins in uh, secondary cortical cells right and these cock cells cock cells cock cells are thick 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 walled so they are thick and these uh, cells of secondary cortex are thin and these cock cells appear dark in color they appear dark, dark in color whereas the cells of secondary cortex appear light in color light colored right okay what is the function of cock and secondary cortex function of cock is to provide mechanical support so cock is involved in providing mechanical support right so it is protective covering mechanical support whereas secondary cortex is involved in the storage of food so it is involved in food storage right okay now all these three layers cock cambium is also called as phylogen cock cambium is also called as phylogen cock is also called as phelum phelum and the secondary cortex is also called as phelloderm so now all these three layers together that is phelum phelogen and phelloderm together are termed as periderm together they are called as periderm periderm right okay uh, now i would like to give you give you one economic importance of this cock so cock of a plant that is oak plant quercus suber its scientific name is quercus suber that is oak plant so the cock of this quercus suber oak plant is used in making bottle stoppers it is used in making bottle stoppers right okay now i'll be showing these three layers let's study these three layers by making a diagram i'll explain about these three layers that is phelum phylogen and phelloderm by making the diagram okay now let's study all these three types of tissues that is cock cambium cock cells and secondary cortex with the help of this diagram okay so this is cock cambium we already discussed that this cock cambium is formed by the de differentiation of the cells present in general cortex right which is secondary meristem this cock cambium cuts off cells towards outer side and inner side the cells which are cut off towards outer side undergo re differentiation into cock cells so these these are cock cells and then the cells which are cut off towards inner side undergo re differentiation into secondary cortex so this is secondary cortex now this cock cock cambium and secondary cortex together represents periderm cock cambium is also called as phylogen we already studied now it is a cock is also called as phelum and the secondary cortex is also called as phelloderm and all these three layers together are called as periderm periderm okay right so now this cock cambium is 
a couple of layers thick and this cork chemium cuts off cells towards outer side and inner side na so outer side cells gets redifferentiated into um, the cork cells along with these thick walled cork cells this cork chemium also produces some thin walled parenchymata cells these thin walled parenchymata cells are exerting pressure towards epidermis and hence epidermis breaks resulting in the formation of an opening lens shaped opening called lenticel right so this cork chemium also produces thin walled parenchymata cells which exert pressure towards the epidermis which results in the breakage of epidermis resulting in the formation of opening called lenticel it is called lenticel because it is this opening is in the form of lens lens shaped opening it is called lenticel so what is the function of this lenticel function of this lenticel is to perform transpiration and gaseous exchange transpiration and even gaseous exchange among these two functions the main function of this lenticels is gaseous exchange gaseous exchange right and these cells which are present below the lenticel which are exerting pressure towards epidermis parenchymata cells these are also called as complementary cells this thin wall parenchymata cells are also called as complementary cells right okay now actually lenticels are replacing the position of stomata so they replace the stomata actually stomata are involved in performing gaseous exchange and transpiration but here lenticels are replacing they are formed in place of these lenticels are formed in place of stomata they are replacing stomata okay so actually when the stem is young when the stem is young there is gaseous exchange and transpiration is performed by stomata right and when the stem becomes old that means after secondary growth the gaseous exchange and uh, transpiration is performed by lenticels right but in case of leaves the transpiration and gaseous exchange is obviously performed by stomata because leaves do not exhibit secondary growth and hence there is no formation of lenticels so lenticels are present in old stem and even old roots after secondary growth but the number of lenticels present in stem stem are more than the number of lenticels present in root after their secondary growth right now i'll be explaining some more points like bark bark i want to explain some more points like bark so bark is a non technical term which represents all the tissues which are present exterior to the vascular cambium outside the vascular cambium that is called bark right so so uh, this is vascular cambium let's say this is vascular cambium so what are the tissues that are present exterior outside exterior or outside of this vascular cambium okay so this is vascular cambium and all the tissues which are uh, present exterior to the vascular cambium represents bark so what are the tissues secondary phloem and periderm represents bark right where where is uh, primary phloem primary phloem got crushed off during secondary growth right okay so bark is a non technical term that represents all the tissues exterior to the vascular cambium so all the tissues all tissues exterior to the vascular cambium are together called as bark exterior to vascular cambium i am writing vascular cambium as vc r referred as bark as bark right okay actually this bark is formed by what it includes what it includes secondary phloem and periderm right so it includes secondary phloem and periderm periderm so major part of the bark is made of 
peridum and minor part of the bark is made of secondary phloem. So for the formation of bark, two types of KB are involved. What are they? Vascular cambium and cork cambium. Vascular cambium is involved in the formation of secondary phloem and cork cambium is involved in the formation of peridum. So major part of the bark is made of cork cambium, right? And minor part of this bark is made of vascular cambium. Okay, and this bark is also called, is of two types. They are early bark or soft bark. This bark is again of two types. They are early bark or soft bark. Early bark. Early bark is the bark which is formed during spring season. That is early growing season. Which is soft, little soft, relatively soft in nature. This is called early bark or soft bark. Which is formed during spring season. That is during the growing season, favorable season. And late bark or, or hard bark. Late bark or hard bark. Which is formed during the late growing season. Late hard bark. And this is formed during late growing season. Late growing season. Right? So this is about bark. So this is all about extra stela secondary growth in dipod stem. And in the next video I will be explaining about the secondary growth in root. That is dipod root. Hope you understood this concept. Thank you students.